All right, in today's video, I want to talk about the fundamentals of gripping and how to hold the sword for training and fighting in bow herd armored combat. So today we're going to talk about how to hold a sword for armored combat, both in training and in fighting. This will apply in pro fights. This will apply in duels, in melees. It's the overall concept of how to not wear out your arm when fighting. Before we do that though, I wanna talk a little bit about the sponsors for today's video. So the first sponsor is me. Go down below, check out my store, woodchuckknight.shop. Uh, we sell t-shirts, we sell hats, we sell um, a whole bunch of different really cool gear and equipment that has my logo on and helps support the channel as well as some of our local teams. Um, and it's just a great way to help support the channel, show your love for the work that I'm doing, and uh, also get some cool merch, so please do that. Second is uh, my biggest sponsor, Canadian Bohurt. So this is a, my Canadian Bohurt Falchion. I love this thing. It was custom built for me to the weight that I want, the dimensions that I want, to put the little knob on the end just where I wanted it. It's super well balanced for melee and is a wonderful falchion that I really like using. So I highly recommend them. If you go to Canadian Bohurt, again, link down below, and before ordering, mention Woodchuck Knight, they'll give you a 10% discount, so that's pretty awesome. We also have a third sponsor today, and this is for everyone local. Sorry if you're not in New Hampshire, this is not gonna help you. But Root Kava, uh, in, uh, right in Nashville, right down from the Knights Hall, is helping to sponsor this channel. And if you go there and get a Kava drink, they will give you 20% off your order if you mention Woodchuck Knight or the Knights Hall. For those who haven't had it, Kava is in uh, a root drink from uh, the islands of the Caribbean, and it is awesome and super calming and a wonderful kind of uh, refreshing drink. And it's just cool to have a kind of a non-alcoholic bar where you can get something different and kind of chill out uh, in the community. So Root Kava, really like them. Um, please go there, and there's our logo here, and I uh, will put a link down below uh, to their information. Also, if you're around New Hampshire. Let's get to the video, though. So why am I making this video? Well, I had a fighter um, out of... Um, out of Thailand actually reached out to me, someone I talk to all the time, uh, and they they've got their first falchion and they've been doing a lot of practice, and they're a Muay Thai fighter, they're super in shape, super athletic, um, really mobile and all that, but after doing a lot of pell work, uh, their forearm has been killing them. <laughs> so I've talked about this before, I mean, maybe, maybe made a video about this a long time ago, but I wanted to kind of revisit it and talk about how to grip your sword in a way that's not going to cause you undue fatigue and also how to train. So I'm holding right now, uh, you know, a fight falchion, a melee falchion, a ready to go battle falchion, whatever it is, it's ready for actual combat. I don't train very often with something like this. The reason being this is relatively heavy, it's meant to be, it's a melee falchion, and I'm gonna get a lot more practice time in with a wooden practice sword with a waster. So this is my waster. Now again, this is an arming sword waster, it's a falchion. Uh, so the lengths are a little bit different, but the grip and the uh, position of your hand and everything is gonna be exactly the same. So I do recommend having a training weapons, or if you have lighter arming swords versus lighter falchions versus heavier falchions, mix it up. Doesn't mean I don't do pal work with this, I certainly do, but most of my pal work is gonna be done with this, or even a foam sword when I go to the Knights Hall and we use the, um, the sparring bobs, the punching bags, and we use foam weapons on them so you don't beat them up as much. So do a lot of my practice with the lighter stuff because it lets me practice my form more consistently before fatiguing, and that's when your form starts to dissipate, right? Then you use this for the kind of the strength and conditioning, right? So you're ready to go into actual fights and not, you know, your muscles won't wear out versus your grip. So what do I mean by that? We're going to use the training falchion, uh, the training weapon to start. So we got here our little wooden waster, right? Got my grip on it, put a little bit of extra tape on just because I liked it and it was a slippery otherwise. Um, so with this, uh, what you want to do is you want to take your hand and you're going to basically make the OK symbol, right? I'm going to make it like that. So the OK symbol, and I'm going to hold the sword primarily with just those two fingers, super loose, right? That's what I want to practice. So what I'm doing is I'm getting very comfortable holding it here. And as you can see, the sword's moving and I'm controlling the movement of the sword. So as I snap it out, I'm controlling just those two fingers. Now, obviously we're gonna put more of a grip on this. We're not gonna just fight with our fingers out like this, but that's the control point of my weapon. Is that, that there? Then you're gonna wrap the rest of your hand around it, but lightly. 
And the reason for this is what happens to most people and will still happen to you in the stress of fighting is you will lock that grip down, you will squeeze it. And as you do it, you're, all your muscles are tense and you're throwing with just your arm. And then you're just using your arm with a locker. And that's what causes a lot of that tendonitis pain, shoulder pain, elbow pain, is using just your arm and having a really closed grip, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is have that loose grip. Loose grip like this. The weapon flows in my hand, right? And this allows me to change angles a little bit even as I'm moving it. It's not just coming. If I have it close, that's it. I get this movement. If I have it here, it's here the amount of different movement, the wave I can get again, how I can control where I want it to go. Get a little more flexibility and maneuverability, which is cool too. So get that there. Get those over hand. I'm going to close the rest of that hand, but this is going to be loose. I'm gripping the weapon, but you can actually see it flexing in my hand as I squeeze that hand tighter. If it's loose, tighter. I have control over that. Now this part here is staying, but this part here is literally flexing and bouncing that weapon. So what do I mean is as I throw my shot, as I throw my shot in there, I'm going to close down. So I'm going to really exaggerate I've opened the hand up. Throw and I'm going to close down on that and it's going to snap forward. So I'm going to tighten up just at the end. And this is similar to kind of throwing a punch, right? You don't throw a punch with your hand completely closed and locked down the whole time. Your hands are loose and open. As you come out and snap, you punch that out there. You're going to close that fist as you complete the punch. You don't sit there kind of squeezing your fist as hard as you can the whole time, but people do that with swords. In fact, like I've got a little bit of soreness right now in my hand. If I squeeze my hand all the way down, I can actually feel that pain just a little bit there from sort of lifting and working out and stuff and kind of over gripping. So I want that loose, comfortable grip, right? And as I throw my shot, I'm going to start closing that weapon and I'll close that hand, squeeze it tighter and kind of snap it out there. So I get that snap right at the end. You can see it out, snap. That's really just the closing and twisting of it a little bit. So that's going to help a little bit. You can get rid of that death grip and get comfortable with a loose, comfortable grip with the weapon, right? The second thing I want to talk about is not throwing it with just your arm. So I am right now. You can see it's just my arm moving, right? So my arm's moving. No matter what shot I'm throwing, I've got a loose hand. It's great. I'm going to open it up again nice and loose, but I'm just using my arm. That's going to get me tired really fast. So the next thing to work on is we're not talking about stance stance. Another video when I go through basic stances, I even talk about this a little bit in it. But as I throw shots, my body needs to be rotating. I need to be throwing with my hips. So in my hips coming down, I'll be throwing down, you see me dipping and throwing that shot with my hips. As I come across, I'm throwing different angles. I can do all these angles. I can throw whatever I want. I can throw a million egg and do everything with it. But while I'm doing that, I'm not just using these arms to fight. If I just do this, I'm going to get tired real fast. If I'm throwing with my body as I'm coming down, one, I can generate power. Because I can literally come up from being a melee, for example. I really want to land that shot. I can come from the back of my shoulder all the way down, chopping. But I'm doing it with all of that motion of my body. So if you watch your own video, if you do your own power work, record yourself. Notice how sometimes when you're starting off, you're really flowy, or maybe you're stiff at first, right? You're stiff because you're just warming up. But as you get loosened up, you start having flow, and you start moving well, and getting steps, everything looks great. And then you do 100 shots, you do 200 shots, and towards the end of it, you find yourself just doing this, right? Bop, bop, bop. Watch your arms, watch your shoulder, watch your hips. Are you moving? Do you have that mobility? If you find yourself, especially when you do kind of that just uh, chop punch drill you see people do a lot, it's chop, punch, chop, punch. Towards the end, people just get tired. They go like this, bop, 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 bop. God, that's so tiring. Versus, I need to have that whole rotation. I'm throwing that punch. You know, my hand's open, so I'm throwing my punch shield, right? So punch shield, punch shield, right? As you're doing this, you need to make sure you have that full body rotation. That's going to help you a lot with that kind of tendonitis, elbow pain, and even the shoulder pain. Most of that comes from too tight a grip, and from just using elbow arm, right? That's it. Uh, so that's really, that's it. If you practice that, if you have uh, questions, if you want to record your own video and send it to me to take a look at, you can find me on Facebook, Woodchuck Knight. Happy to help you as well. Give you any pointers. I am by no means the best sword fighter out there, but I do think I understand the fundamentals pretty well, and I'm happy to teach others and help you all understand kind of how to improve and keep that from happening. So let's talk about just one more thing. When you do get that tendonitis, right? 
So I will tell you the truth, it's probably gonna happen somewhat. If you've never done any sword or weapon stuff, you haven't swung a lot of hammers and axes, and even if you have, you haven't done it to this degree, you'll probably get some pain, right? And that is part of this. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to kind of work through it. Sometimes it does mean, like it can be bad enough if you go to PT, but most of the time it's just mild. So what do you do with that, right? So um, I am by no means a physical therapist. If you have any bad pains, if things aren't functioning, please go see a doctor, get it checked out. But just in general, if you're getting pain across here, for instance, for your gripping, if you're getting pain in the elbow here, pain in that shoulder, the first thing you wanna look at is, is your biomechanics and your body movements, right? But let's say you're doing, you fix it, you still get that pain. Um, there are things that you can do. Um, heat does help. Um, he can help and then you can actually push down on a lot of those tendons and break up some of that fascia in there. There are uh, specific tools you can buy on Amazon that are like nubby and kind of fat and you can push down. You can actually push a lot of that uh, kind of like calcium deposits around and actually will remove them and move them off. And that can be beneficial, right? So there are videos out there on how to do this. If you're getting tendonitis, you're getting fascia issues with it, that's the way to deal with it, in my opinion. You heat it first, then you do that, then you can ice it afterward. But ice also is super beneficial if it gets swelling. Uh, but the key is to not stop training completely, but make sure you're not overdoing it to the point that the pain is getting significantly worse. Again, this is my opinion from my own experiences and talking to other fighters. Um, Again, if it's bad enough and it's really hurting you, like just stop and go to, go to the doctor. But if you get after and you go, man, it's really sore, it's tight. A lot of us work desk jobs and computer jobs too, so you have a lot of that tight being carpal tunnel, like all that tendonitis. Like it can, it can compound. Um, find ways, look up ways to do it online. There are simple exercises um, that you can use to literally, like I said, push on this. You just push down hard down there. It'll actually break up of it. Almost a really deep massage essentially is what you're doing, right? Um, you can get sports massage, that will help as well. Um, but if you're just doing it at home, like that stuff tends to help me a little bit. It's just a little bit of heat, just a little bit of pressure pushing down, whatever that point is that's hurting and, and kind of moving that stuff out of there that's locked up and then ice it afterward. Um, and usually eventually you'll kind of power through and get through that and your body will adapt and will understand and your tendons will get a little stronger and you know that you're using those mechanics. So don't be shocked if you get a little soreness, that's okay. If it's significant, if it increases and stays consistent, then start looking at ways to resolve it. But I would still say keep doing some training because you want your body to start conditioning to be doing these things. So that's kind of my spiel. Basic sword grip, um, basic movement. Go train, get better. I'm the Woodchuck Knight. Like, subscribe, follow, all that wonderful stuff, and have a great day.